Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new video here on Reading FC Away Days. I'm James and today we're going to be sitting down and talking to you guys about, well, the first real big saga in Reading's 2022 summer. Now, this is kind of going to be like a little series of videos that I'm going to try and put out throughout the summer. Um, as well. It's going to be one of the biggest off-seasons in Reading's history as uh, yeah, it's quite, going to be quite a few names coming in and out of that door and uh, yeah, safe to say it might not be a few names that we like and it might not be a few names that we want to see go but um, yeah, it's going to be just kind of something I try and keep up with throughout this year um, just because, well got nothing else to do but uh yeah we're gonna start off then really with the first piece of news and it's always start from the top and from the top is normally a director of football and that is actually what Reading have gone and employed and uh yeah it's actually the return of mark bowen probably something that not a lot of people would have thought would happen if i'm completely honest it's not something that i thought would happen either if I'm honest myself, um, Mark Bowen coming back to the club. Obviously, he was director of, or he was like head of football operations previously, uh, and pointed himself manager. I think he did all right as manager. Then got sacked just before the start of the season. He's gone to Wimbledon, took Wimbledon down, and now he's come back as Reading head of football. And um, look, it's strange. They always say never go back. I mean, Mark Bowen didn't really have a real successful tenure originally but look in my opinion I think it's a good appointment for the club I think we needed someone to come in that was going to be able to kind of level out what we need um, obviously we've had this fella this advisor come in and he hasn't really done much but really bad things for the club obviously Mark Bowen someone that nailed down Josh Lawrence to a contract like I think maybe Mark Bowen's got ideas and from the sounds of things it sounds like he's taking the club in a positive direction going forward. Now this is going to tie in with a new story later on but you know sounds like there's a plan in place obviously nobody knows what that plan is just yet but it sounds like there's a plan and obviously what we've got at the minute is no budget we can't sign players for fees and Mark Bowen coming in looking at that free market hopefully uh, obviously he was able to find a diamond in Josh Laurent hopefully he's able to find a few more uh, just like that because we're definitely gonna need it now looking at this um, this also ties into another employ employment that the club have made and it's actually the permanent basis of Paul Ince as the manager for the 2022-23 season. Now again, this is an appointment that might not sit too great with some fans. Uh, for me personally, look, Paul Ince did a great job in keeping us up. I wouldn't say he'd done a fantastic, brilliant job, he should definitely have been the manager, but he came in to do a job and that was to keep Reading in the championship and he did it. Um, he won what three games from 14 drew four and lost seven so you know it's a 50 percent loss ratio there uh, i think he had a 29 percent win rate i uh, definitely wasn't looking it up yesterday <laughs> um but look he came in to do a job he's now going to have the opportunity to try and build his squad as well i think for me it's going to be a case of not judging him too quickly he did all right when he came here he's definitely brought back some sort of passion and some sort of connection with the club and the fans and that's really probably the most important thing that we need going into this season because I think this season's going to be another struggle. Uh, I really do think it's going to be a struggle and something that Paul Lintz can hopefully bring in is that connection with the fans and the passion in the team that can drive us to hopefully a 16th place finish, a 17th, 18th. Look, I'll be happy if we finish 21st if I'm completely honest because I don't think we're going to be able to... Uh, stay up this season but again it's going to be a case of who we bring in and what we bring in who we keep uh, so it's going to be really difficult to make predictions going into the season um, so yeah looking at that one again Paul Lintz has come in listen I think this basically confirms the signing of Tom Ince and I think that's a good thing Tom Ince was quite good last year when he came to the club put in a lot of effort and that's something that Paul Lintz wanted to see as his players make efforts I'm hoping that this also means that Josh Laurent is going to stay look Josh Laurent has been good when he's been at the club he was great under Paul Lintz fantastic player and I think it's someone that we really should be looking to keep around the club again though it's going to be a case of we're letting go a lot of these players are these players part of the problem are they part of the solution I think Josh Lawrence is part of the solution 
I think John Swift's going to be part of the solution. I think Andy Yeardom's going to be part of the solution. But again, some of these players that I'm winding off have been players that have been here for years and that have been stuck in the championship for years. Look, I think Paul Lintz is going to come in and I think he's going to install a certain way of football which might not go too great with the fans. But I think it's going to be a certain style of football that will get Reading points at the end of the day. I've seen a lot of people saying he's going to be sacked by October, November. I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, let me know in the comment section below, guys, what you think about the employment of Paul Ince. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan, but I'm also not going to be a hater because, to me, he came in, he did the job he was asked to, and now he's been given it on a permanent basis. So we'll just have to see what he does going forward from now. <laughs> Um, finally, then to round off the last little bits of news, this is going to be touching on some contracts that Reddin have supposedly handed out. The first one is Andy Yeardom. It's been reported uh, by Jonathan Lowe that Reddin have given him a new two-year deal. I think that's a good thing. Andy Yeardom won the club's player of the season last year. A bit controversial. I think John Swift should have won it. But he's never, nonetheless was one of Reddin's better players last season in what was a miserable, miserable season. Listen, he was a part of a defence that conceded 87 goals in the league last year, but he was probably the only positive outlet from that. Andy Yeardom's a good defender. He shows passion. He shows that he wants to drive. He shows he wants to win. I don't think he was a mistake for most of them 87 goals conceded. I'm happy to see Yeardom stay. I think he's a good defender. And uh, yeah, hopefully he can agree to a deal with Reading. And the second one is the unrealistic one, which I don't expect to happen. But if it does... I'll be very surprised. And that's actually the fact that John Swift has been offered a brand new three-year contract. Um, supposedly, and this has been reported as well, that his representatives are happy with the employment of Mark Bowen. And they're actually pleased with the plan that he has given to them and that he's uh, got in place for the club. Look, if we can tie down John Swift to a new contract, it'd be outstanding. He's been here for ages. He's a player that is popular with fans. Listen, I've hated on him quite a bit throughout the years, but... I've always recognised that quality in him. I think he can get a bit lazy at times, but also he's got that quality and has been the club's best player for a few years now. Look, I think John Swift was there for most of the season without Lucas Schwell, and he still picked up, what, 11 goals and 13 assists this season. Give him a full season with Lucas Schwell, who banged in 10 goals himself after missing, what, three quarters of the campaign? I think it could be, could be a good little partnership that we strike up there. Uh, so, yeah... West Brom are reportedly in for uh, John Swift as well, but listen, if he can sign a new deal, that'd be great. Tom Ince reported as well that he signed a new contract. That was just from a Twitter account. I'm not 100% too sure if that's been uh, confirmed or not by Jonathan Lowe or anyone like that, but it's also been reported that, yeah, Tom Ince has been given a contract as well. From the out of contract guys, though, who would I like to see stay? I think Femi Aziz should stay. I think he's someone that we could utilise for the future. Again, though, his bones seem like they're made out of glass. Is he viable for a contract? I'm not really 100% sure. Uh, do I, who else do I think should stay? Tom Holmes. I think he's a defender that we should keep. I like Michael Morrison, but we've tied down Scott Dan, so maybe not. Liam Moore set to come back to the club. Personally, think we should get shot of him, but sounds like Paul Lintz wants to keep him. Paul Lintz said he's a good defender, and Paul Lintz says he wants to see what he can bring. We'll just have to see what happens next season, really. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Tell me what you thought about the news stories in the comment section below, and tell me what you think will be uh, the biggest shock of the summer going forward. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. See you in the next one, yeah? See you then.